Welcome to the lecture of financial risk management. This is our lecture 12 related to option contracts. Let's move towards the contents of this lecture. We are going to discuss how to calculate the profit and loss for option contracts. In previous videos, we explored uh, the concept of derivatives and developed our understanding of forward and future contract and option contracts. And we saw that there are four different kinds of option contracts. We have long call, long put, short call and short put. And in this lecture, we are going to calculate the profit and loss for each of those four kinds of contracts. And the method to calculate the profit is different. Then we are going to understand what are the three different types of traders in derivative markets. So let's get started. So starting with the first type of the option contract, uh, which is the subtype of call option. Uh, so we have this buyer of call option or what we called it a long call. So this is long call. So in long call, the option holder is going to buy the asset. And he is entering into this call option or buying the call option to safeguard the risk of increase in price of the asset that he may buy in future. So the profit so the formula for long call option to calculate the profit and loss for long call option is maximum of zero comma future spot price minus strike price minus premium. So first let's understand why we are deducting the premium. Uh, we are deducting the premium because in case of buyer of the call option, the buyer of call option would pay premium. So this is the cash outflow. Now this part of the formula A takes care of the understanding or the logic of long call option and when in case of a long call option the option holder would have profit or loss. So that logic is taken care of in this formula and uh, let's let me use the notations that we had in our uh, previous discussion. When we were discussing forward contract, then we would denote future spot price by ST, the capital ST, and the strike price or forward price using the, the alphabet K. We would use the similar notation in this lecture also. So let's first uh, see the example and then we would explore how to solve this example. So assume the assets strike price is 1000 and this would be K. The strike price is denoted by K and the premium for, for this call option is 93.81. If the asset price at expiration is $1,100, will the option owner exercise the option? And what will be the profit and loss of uh, the call option holder? So let's move to the solution. This is our formula that we saw in previous slide and uh, let me first uh, solve this uh, uh, problem and then I would give you the logic behind this formula. So uh, this would be denoted as maximum of 0 comma st minus k and bracket close minus the premium. We have already discussed why we are deducting the premium. So if we input the values then we previously in the last slide we saw that this 1000 was K because it was the strike price and this 1100 is the assets price at expiration and asset price at expiration is future spot price, right? So this is the future spot price is 1100, <coughs> which is denoted by ST. And then we have a uh, premium of 93.81. This is another part of this question. We would have this uh, in next uh, slide. 
So uh, we input the values. So ST was 1100 in previous slide, K was 1000, and the premium was 93.81. We simply input the values, and by deducting uh, 1000 from 1100, we have 11. Now this is the part that you need to understand. So this says that maximum of uh, whatever the values uh, are there in the bracket separated by the comma. So in this case, uh, we would have to choose the maximum value between 0 and 100. Obviously in this case 100 is positive value, so it is greater than uh, 0. The, the maximum of 0 or 100 would be 100 and this would come as it is. So the answer would be uh, plus 6.13. That means that <coughs> If the the uh, the option holder, uh, in case of this option, if the strike price was one thousand and the premium was ninety three point eight one, if at the end of the expiration or on the expiration date, in the market the price of that asset is eleven hundred, then the call option holder would earn a profit of six point nine one. So let's understand the logic behind this profit. So let me draw a timeline and this is time zero when the both the parties enter into the contract. The let's say the option holder is uh, A and option holder paid a premium of 93.81 on this starting time period that was a negative cash flow and they agreed that on expiration no matter whatever the price of this asset is in the market, B would sell this asset at 1000 rupees or $1,000. So let me write this 1000 here. Okay, so this is the strike price. This is the agreed upon price. And remember this, in this case, this, op, this B is the option writer. Let me denote it with OW. And A is option holder. A paid the premium, A have the right, A have the choice, he can exercise it on the time of expiration. So on maturity, on this time period, expiration time period, A can either buy it from B, from which they, he have made the contract or A can buy it from the open market. So that is the choice of A because he is option holder and he have the right. Remember option holder, the term denotes that. He have the option. Option is simply the choice. Okay, so let's say on this expiration date, we fast forward and we move to that specific date and now we have to make decision whether to buy it from B or buy it from open market. Now in open market, the price is 1100. This is what future spot price is. Spot price and future. The, the open market price is 1100 of that asset which uh, B agreed to sell on 1000. Now obviously instead of buying from the open market, A would want to buy it from B at the agreed upon price at $1000. So A would buy from B at $1000 instead of buying uh, from open market at 1100. And in these examples, when we are calculating the profit and loss, we are assuming that the option holder, option writers are entering into the, specifically option holders entering into the contract with the intention of earning profit. Rather than to minimize risk, they, their intention is to earn profit. So they are not going to hold this asset or use this asset or consume this asset. They are going to sell this asset. So uh, A bought this asset from B instead of buying from open market because in open markets for 1100 and A is getting uh, for a cheaper price uh, if he buys from B. So he buys it at 1000. So this is the buying price. Say for example, this is the buying price of that asset for A. And then A sells, let's assume that A sells it in the open market, then the selling price would be 1100. So obviously the profit, uh, the golden rule to calculate the profit of uh, any uh, business transaction is to find the difference between the buying and the selling price. So if I am selling for, if A is selling for 1100 and buying at uh, 1000, then the profit would be 100 rupees. 
and the cost to enter in this contract was 93 whether a executes the contract a exercise the contract or not the premium is gone that is the cost so our profit the profit of uh, bond option holder uh, sorry the uh, the call option holder uh, in this case a is 6.91 so uh, instead of just using the formula it's uh, more better to understand the uh, logic behind this uh, formula so let's move to the second part of this question and this would further uh, deepen our understanding of this formula so second part was now suppose the asset is 900 at expiration so this now in the second example this is our st instead of being 1100 our st is 900 what will be the profit loss of call option before moving forward let me quickly answer this uh, will the owner excise the option yes uh, a would excise the option because he's better off by excising the option and excising means buying it from b rather than buying it from uh, from the open market and what will be the profit and loss and we saw that it would be six point uh, something okay so moving on to this next part uh, this is our xt and uh, let's see what the profit and loss is so again using the same formula instead of using 1100 as our st we are going to use 900 as our st and the rest would be same so in this case maximum of 900 minus 1000 would be minus 100 so maximum of 0 or minus 100 obviously uh, minus 100 is lesser than 0 so 0 would be the value that we would get from this part of the equation so 0 minus and our loss is 93.81 so now no matter how much the st decreases how much the price of the asset in the market decreases say for example it even decreases to say 500 then 500 minus 1000 would be minus 500 and maximum of 0 or minus 500 would again be 0 and the answer would be 93.81 so you can uh, you know test this uh, um, so the maximum what this suggests is uh, whatever the price in the market is the the maximum loss of call option holder is going to be the 93.81 that is the premium that call option holder paid for this uh, option so in this case the uh, when the price of the asset decreases in the open market or future spot price decreases or we can say when st is less than k then the call option holder would uh, be in a disadvantageous position he would occur losses but the loss maximum loss would be the premium that he paid and this would be better understood from this uh, in this graph which is taken from the op uh, option future and other derivatives uh, by john c hull 8th edition and what this does is that there are two lines this is line a this line denotes the profit and loss at different future spot prices uh, when we are using forward contract so this is for forward contract and this is for long call option so we can see there is a a linear relationship a strictly linear relationship and as the future uh, future spot price increases in the market the profit of call option holder increases and there is a break even point at some price but that is not of our interest in this uh, lecture but the important thing that to understand is the long call option graph looks somewhat different the first difference is that the break even point is achieved at a higher price the profit at same st is lesser for long call option whereas it is higher for forward call option uh, forward uh, contract that is because of the premium that we pay remember we discussed that call option or option in general costs more because of the premium 
So one of our conclusion is that as the ST increases, the price increases in case of forward contract. But in case of call option, it is somewhat lower than the forward contract because of the cost of the premium. The second is more importantly, this line, it gets flat. With forward contract, as the future spot price decreases, the loss of call option holder would increase. But in case of long call, it gets flat at some point and that point is 95.68 in this case. And that is the premium. So remember we said that if the future spot price decreases, to some extent the call option holder would in suffer losses. But the maximum loss of call option holder would be the premium that he paid. So this is more evident from this graph. And let's end this discussion of long call option. So the conclusion that we can draw is as ST increases, profit of call option holder will increase. The maximum loss of call option holder is the premium that is paid. And the to minimize this long call is used to minimize the risk of increase in price by the buyer of the asset. Let's ne next discuss the uh, seller of call option or short call. This was short call, the opposite party. And we would see the profit of long call would exactly be the, uh, the loss of the short call by the same amount. So the formula is we have a negative uh, sign for minus and then we have this positive sign. Let me first explain the concept behind this positive sign. It is because the short call option or seller of the call option receives the premium. So that is the cash info. That's why it is positive. So this negative sign is to, to, uh, to mimic the logic of the short call option into the formula. So the example is somewhat similar. Consider a 1000 strike price call option with six months to expiration at the time of the option is written, the option seller receives the premium 93.81. Suppose the asset is in six months is 1100 and this means that it is a future spot price, price after six months, so future spot price. Then what would be the profit and loss of call option, right? Remember, in this case, they aren't asking uh, will the option be excised or not because that uh, right is not with the seller of call option, it is with the buyer of the call option. This is the second part that we will discuss in a while. Okay, so this is the formula and we, we input the notations. Uh, ST is 1100, K is 1000 and we have positive sign maximum of 0 or plus 100. Obviously, it would be plus 100 but this minus sign would be there. So, yeah, the answer would be minus 100 plus 93.81 and we get 6.91 minus. That is a loss for short call position or short call uh, or, or the option writer, call option writer. And this is exactly opposite to the profit of uh, call option holder, the long call option. Um, and we, in the starting of uh, option contracts or uh, derivatives, we said this is a zero sum game. And by zero sum game, we mean that the profit of one party is exactly equal to the uh, is exactly opposite to the loss of the other party. So uh, this is a zero sum game rather than a positive or uh, a positive sum game. Okay. So what is the logic behind this? Again using the same understanding at point zero, Mr. A gave a premium of 93.81 to Mr. B. So for B, this is a positive value that we have entered here. And they have agreed that Mr. B would sell the asset at 1000 rupees or dollars on expiration. On the time when the contract would mature, the price in market is <coughs> 11. Now to, now, who would make the decision whether to excise or not? 
it it isn't the prerogative of B because it is the call option writer. It is the prerogative of option holder. So in this case, A would make the decision whether to excise or not to excise. For A, it is advantageous. A would definitely excise it. <clears throat> in case of formula, we do not have to uh, use that logic. But if we are not using the formula, then we would have to understand it. So uh, now A is going to excise it because we know that if A go, uh, is going to buy it from open market, it would cost 1100 and if A buys from B, then it would cost 1000. So A is obviously going to buy it uh, from B for $1000. <coughs> so now in this case, we are assuming that B currently do not hold asset, but we have the obligation to the call of A. Whatever A says, we have to oblige. So in this case, A makes the um, the decision to excise and buy it from B. We do not have the asset, so B would go to the open market and buy it for her eleven hundred rupees. So this would be the buying price for B, and sell it for one thousand to uh, A. And again, the profit would be buying minus selling. And that would be uh, minus 100. So in this case, the loss from this uh, transaction is minus 100 from, for B. And if we add the premium that he received at the start of the contract, that was 93.81, then the total loss is 6.19. So in this case, as the future spot price increases, the profit of short call option or op call option seller would decrease or their loss would increase. <clears throat> and the second part of this example was uh, okay. The second part was by changing the 11 rate instead of taking 11 rate as ST future spot price, we are going to take 900 as future spot price. In that case, the solution would look like this. Uh, the formula is similar instead of using 1100, we are using 900. So, 900 minus 1000 would be minus 100. So, maximum of 0 or minus 100 would always be 0. <coughs> so, that would give us the answer of uh, 93.81. And this is the profit of uh, the seller of the call option. And if we decrease the price further, say to 500, future spot price decreases to 500 at the time of expiration, then this would be 500 minus 500. And uh, again, the answer would be similar, that is 93.81. What this means is that the maximum profit that the seller of the call option can get is the premium that he received. So the maximum uh, loss can be will depend on the future spot price, but the maximum profit for the seller of call option is the premium that he received. And let's again uh, understand the the idea behind this is that. A and B again that's a whole example we understood that and the the agreed upon price is 1000 but now at the time of expiration when A is going to get the uh, asset at the time of that um, the price in the market is 900. So obviously A is not going to buy it from B for 1000 rather the other A is going to buy it from the open market at 900 rupees. So the option would not be exercised. And the premium is uh, gone in any ways. So A is going to buy it from the open market. So in this case, A, B gets to keep the premium. Um, in both cases, B gets to keep the premium. But in this case, the loss from the buying and selling of the, uh, the asset is, uh, is gone. So we are just left with the positive value of the premium. And this is how the graph would look like as the ST increases, future, price, future spot price increases, the profit of uh, the profit of seller of the call option would decrease. And this this line denotes the 
case of short forward contract uh, it is written here and this second line is for the uh, short call option now you can see that uh, as the price in the open market decreases the profit of short forward contract increases but in case of short call option there is a flat line at some point and which is 95.61 uh, positive 95.61 so it means as the st increases the profit for the writer of call would decrease but as st decreases the profit would ex increase to some extent and that some extent is the premium that the writer of call is going to receive so our conclusion from this discussion is that as st decreases the profit of call option writer increases or as st increases the uh, profit of call option writer decreases the maximum profit of call option writer is the premium that he received 